Hello, everybody. I have such a special episode today. I'm so excited to, for the first time, introduce you to some of the graduates of the Become a Time Hacker Coach program. So these are certified time hacker coaches that some of which you will be able to work with, by the way, one-to-one as Time Hacker coaches through Time Hackers and others you'll be able to work with one-to-one outside of Time Hackers and some both. Um, But it's just amazing to think that this idea that was had very loosely on my maternity leave is now closing with these brilliant, amazing coaches that I get to introduce you to today. So... Without further ado, I want to introduce you. Well, actually, I'm just going to let you guys introduce yourselves. Um, You can just introduce yourselves, say your name, say a little bit about um, why you wanted to become a time hacker, why you wanted to become a time hacker coach, um, and then we'll dive into all the brilliance in all your brains um, afterwards. Okay, does that sound good? Yes. (laughs) Amazing. All right, Bridget, you come up on my screen, so you go first. Okay, so I'm Bridget, I'm Bridget Mitchell, and I have been a time hacker since it first started. I became a time hacker because my I felt like my life was totally ruled by the clock. I, I am a coach and I coach in time hackers and out of time hackers, um, but I also have a business making boxes for books and manuscripts. And it's very project based work. I was doing it all by the hour. I was constantly having deadlines that would send me into a spin. So um, I joined Time Hackers to, to stop giving time responsibility for pretty much all the results or lack of results in my life. So good. And actually, Bridget was the first person I think I ever hired to coach inside Time Hackers. And it came via an Instagram DM because I was trapped in a situation that the coaching call was supposed to happen. And I definitely want to speak more about that as well. That's a fun story. Tracy, hello. Hello. I'm Tracy Emerson. And I came to Time Hackers because I am a time management junkie and um, love all the systems wanted to figure out how to maximize every moment of my day. Um, and you, your concepts absolutely revolutionized my thinking about how to approach my day and to give me the freedom to work with what it is that I want to work. That's going to work for me. Um, and just exactly like Bridget said it's this whole idea of not giving time the credit for what it is that happens in our life um and we we use those terms like you know those sentences about time oh I just need more time or yeah it took time but you know it got done and we we do that so cavalier that we don't really realize the impact that it actually has on our psyche because we are literally handing over all of our results to time. So I just love that whole, that whole concept. Um, And of course I've been in your world for like a long time. I followed you right from the beginning of your career and um, had the opportunity to jump in. So I certainly wasn't going to say no. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Thanks so much, Tracy. So good. And such a good reminder for everyone listening of like how we do that, how we give time credit, how we give time responsibility and what that actually creates for us. So thank you for that. Jo, hello, hello. Hi, Vicky. So I'm Jo Ryan and I help stay-at-home mums have time for what they want alongside their motherhood. So whether that's to read a book or write a book. So I joined Time Hackers, it was about a year and a half ago and it was for your pop-up holiday hustle Facebook group. I remember that, it was great. And really it was just, I was so busy buying all the courses to be more organized, to meal plan better. And to, I even invested in a speed cleaning course. I was trying everything, you know, toys organization, everything. All trying to get more organized to have time for me, which the thing I wanted to do back then was to write a blog. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't find any time to write. And the more I did it, I the more I read all these things, I realized I don't want to be a better mum the way society tells us, which is be more organized, do all the things. But I wanted to 
do it the way that felt right for me, which was to have more connection with my kids. And through listening to your podcast and the things you put out there, I realized how am I ever going to have this connection to them when I do not have that connection to myself. And I know that's one of your pillars is obviously relationship to self. So that's what motivated me to join. And then I obviously loved it. And then to become a coach, I just, that was an amazing opportunity because I just wanted to help more mums do this and to take this work deeper and deeper. And your program has certainly, the training has done that brilliantly. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for those lovely introductions and getting to know uh, getting to know you for our listeners to get to know you a little bit. Um, and for, for you listening, by the way, at the end of the episode and in the show notes, we are going to have links for you to stay connected with everyone in the episode so that you can you know, stay connected, um, basically. I'm just going to keep using the word connected because Joe used it. <laughs> um, amazing. So today I really do want to talk about becoming a Time Hacker coach and what was different for you about that. And if any of you had done any work already to be a coach, if you already had certifications, what was different about becoming a Time Hacker coach? Like what made you want to become a Time Hacker coach? Anyone want to jump in on that? Yeah, I'll go, Vicky, that I had done, you know, I've certified as a life coach. And what was so different for me is that I believe that program was telling us how to be like, you must do it this way, follow these rules and paths, and then you will, you know, have the result of being a good coach. And what I love so much about your training is it really welcomed us exactly as we are, like who we are is right and good. We are enough. We don't need to change ourselves. You definitely did not want us to be like copies of Vicky and do it your way. You wanted us to bring our gifts to the table. And that's what I love. There was so much, the whole group, there was so much acceptance from everyone. There seemed to be so much appreciation between each and every one of us for the gifts we brought. They were all very, very different coaches, which was fascinating to see actually how, how differently people can coach. I love that I had that exposure to so many different modes in that way so that's what I loved is just like bring your whole self to this and obviously you gave us tips because we're coaching on time which you are the expert on and the feedback was always incredible you welcomed feedback from each of us so it wasn't like let's all listen to what Vicky tells us to do or be it was so collaborative and so supportive as well so I just loved that experience to get to be there in full acceptance of myself yeah I love what you're saying and it's, it is very important I think so often we go into like training programs and essentially what we're taught in that program is to be less of ourselves and more of the person who's training that program and I don't think the world needs carbon copies of any any human I think what it needs is all of us having permission to be more of ourselves and that applies to being a coach as well because you know, and one of the things I'm having you guys build out now is your time hacker like coach profile. So people can select who they want to work with. And those differentiators are the superpowers. They are the reason why people will connect with you and want to be coached by you instead of being like, oh, who is the best Vicky impersonator? <laughs> Which is like, you know, never going to be good. So I love that you pointed that out. And I also agree with you. I think something so magical in the room was like the collaboration and the friendships that I saw happen, like the deepening of all of your relationships with each other as we were giving feedback. It wasn't like surface level. It was really like deep, that willingness to give and receive feedback um, was really powerful. So thank you for pointing that out. Amazing. Tracy? I, I mean, Joe, you just said that so beautifully. I mean, you encapsulated, like you stole everything I was going to say, basically. So, <laughs> um, But really, I mean, I am also a certified coach, went through a training program. Um, and as somebody who is triggered very strongly with academia and passing and failing and all of that, um, your program created such a safe haven to know that 
I was already a great coach when I entered into this space and that I didn't have to prove that I was a good coach. I didn't have to prove anything about myself. I was there to learn and to deepen the concepts that you teach so that I can then pass that gift on to other people and help them see what they need to see the possibilities within themselves. So, I mean, that's what's, it's just such a safe haven to be in. It really and truly is, Vicki. And that, like, honestly, I have been triggered by academia my whole life. And I was not felt, I didn't feel that way in this, in this course at all, not at all. So thank you very much for that. Thank you for that. And thank you for sharing that. And it did actually, now you mentioned it, it did come up a few times um, with different people about wanting to know about what was required to pass or that. And, and it was interesting to see how the assumptions that we have in, in a program that's going to certify us in some way. And I'm completely with you. I have a lot of, you know, like bad memories from school and being told I wasn't good or failing and being told I was going to get kicked out of school because I didn't achieve certain grades. And it is very triggering. And I do think the number one thing, that, our number one job when we're building community around something is creating safety. Like if there isn't safety, you cannot learn. You can have the best information in front of you, but your brain is too triggered and completely somewhere else. So I love that you pointed that out. And it was absolutely one of my intentions going in. It's like, if there's one thing that everyone leaves with, it's like feeling safe in, their, in themselves and in their ability to show up. So thank you for sharing that, Tracy. Bridget, hello. So also, Joe has said everything. And also... I suppose I joined because I, I think Time Hackers, the work we do in Time Hackers, the results we get in Time Hackers is pretty magical. I just think everyone needs that. Mm -hmm. everyone, you know, that it's useful for everyone. I'm a mum, I have three children, I have several businesses. The, um, the, the safety that time hacking brings you just enables you to do so much more that you hadn't expected of yourself. And so for me, it was like a no brainer that I was gonna do the Be A Time Hacker Coach course because in my business, I just thought it was essential mm. and I think we don't allow ourselves the freedom that's available to us um, when we when we are giving all our responsibility to time. Mm -hmm. So that for me, it was just a no brainer. And also, when I was in the group, I did find it quite intimidating to be in a room with such amazing coaches such amazing coaches it was also really interesting to be in a room with lots of different coaching styles that was really lovely and it was also really lovely to find out what everybody else found difficult and so whilst I found it difficult to begin with I've actually come to the end of it feeling much more secure in myself my coaching ability and like safer in that even if I am struggling with somewhat something I have a space where I can totally discuss it openly mm. and nobody's gonna shame me or ridicule me for it yes you're just gonna receive support for it yeah Yes, amazing. And then I do want to talk about, so just to give everyone some background, because I did share with the Time Hacker coaches in this round, some of like the behind the scenes of my, of my business and as it was going on. And you guys experienced firsthand me building this program around you. And one of the things that came up was a decision to build live Q&A calls on every single topic and the decision to hire you guys 
to do it, which wasn't something that you knew about coming into the program. And going forward, you know, if I run this program again, when we run this program again, I do think actually it was a really great thing to kind of have, it was very time hackerish to just like have everyone come in and teach. So you guys, the process just for everyone listening was they would pick a topic, they would teach on it live inside our Time Hacker Coach Facebook group, um, get notes and feedback from me, from other people, and then host a call with the training and answering questions live. Um, so how was it for you guys to have the opportunity? What did you learn through it? Um, and what did you think about it being like even sprung on you? Oh, I have to say, Vicky, when you, there was one call where you said, if I asked one of you to, to teach right now, how would you feel? I, my heart was beating right out my chest. I really considered in that moment, should I just pretend the computer's gone down and run away? I mean, that was, that was proper fear. I really felt that pounding in my, in my chest. It was awful. And then you said, you know, after a bit of talking, you said, I'm not going to ask you to do that and the relief in my body. But after that, I thought, hang on a minute, what could I teach on right now? About five ideas immediately popped in my head. It wouldn't have been a problem. The only problem is the idea that it has to be perfect and it has to be well presented and you have to be professional and all these ideas that just jump right in. But thanks to Time Hackers, obviously I know these are thoughts. They're there to keep you safe, which means keep you exactly the same as you've always been. They are not a problem. They're part of the process. And so I just relaxed into it then. I thought, oh, I'd love to teach on this. And all the ideas came. And then when it came to it, I thought, what an opportunity. I also thought, how have I done this before? And of course, you know, I've been live on Instagram every Tuesday. I thought, what's the difference? <laughs> it's the same. So I thought, yeah, how is this an opportunity? And it was totally for me because in my business, I've only ever done one-on-one -on -one coaching. And what has this experience shown me? It's shown me I can completely, capably, and very well teach in a group. I can, I now feel confident doing group coaching because we obviously did that in the training. And I think, I just think, wow, how has this opportunity now expanded my own business as well? So I'm very, very grateful for that. Wow, I love that share for everyone listening. It's like having initial fear is not a problem. Like, I think people even maybe even look at me and think that I don't have fear anymore. I have fear all the time. The fear isn't a problem. It's just there when you do something new. Like it logically makes so much sense that like something new or something expansive or something exposing, like fear is part of the formula. So I love that you shared the initial reaction and then the relief and then almost the like disappointment of like, yeah. Oh, wait I actually want to do it and that's such an interesting pattern for everyone listening to think about like I mean I've had literally that experience because I've stopped myself going forward for things before of like oh I want to raise my hand for the opportunity at work I want to be the one to speak or meet this client and be like oh no I'm too afraid and then someone else do it and we'd be like oh I actually am fully capable of doing it I don't know why I, why I listen to that fear so thank you for sharing that yeah. Yeah. And um, Tracy? Yeah. So interestingly enough, my topic in the group was fear. So, I mean, this was, you know, when, when it was presented, I was like, Ooh, okay, this is really scary. Like, first of all, I have to be visible in front of everybody. So that's not one of my uh, greatest things that I like to do is to like show up um, on camera and, and start talking. But it's so interesting that once you start to do it and you just embrace the opportunity, it's like, okay, I, I can do this. I got this. I got my own back. And, and the best part is, is I just simply had to remind myself who was going to be watching this in the group. And that literally lowered my nervous system. Cause I was like, this is, this is good. This is like, all of these people care about me. I don't have to worry about being judged negatively I'm going to get feedback which is exactly what you want as you are growing and as you are becoming a coach and a teacher and a leader you can't do that without feedback right so it, it's it's really important and then when the Q&A thing happened um I literally I remember there was a post and you said Tracy do you want to do this and I was like I'm in I'm in I'll take it 
And I like literally had like a day to prep for the whole thing and, and get ready for it. And of course, technology and I don't get along. So I had like poor Kayla, I had tons and tons of conversations with her. I can't get in. I can't do it. Something's going wrong. Um, but I finally figured it out again, got my back. Right. And, and that's exactly what you teach. But what's more important in the whole thing was I gave myself the ability to have the pause that you teach about, just to have the pause to go, it's all going to be okay. I got this. I can do it. And that is such a gift to be able to become aware of that pause and to take it for yourself when you need it. So, I mean, the opportunities were phenomenal. And also, I just want to say, as you built out the program, and we saw you build out the program, it gave me the permission to realize that if I'm doing creating a program for the group of people that I coach, it's okay to switch things up, turn things around, add things in. Nobody's going to be like, well, this wasn't what you told me originally. Like, what's happening here? Sure, there's going to be questions. But that permission to let things happen and evolve as the people show up and evolve with you, that was magical, seriously. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. I do think it's like one of the biggest things that stops so many people is thinking I have to perfect the program before I start when the irony is like, I learned so much from you guys about it became like a relationship, like a dance, much like coaching one-on-one -on -one can be, where it's like, okay, this is how I can best support them. How else can I support them? This is me deciding at the beginning, like I know everything that they need. Like, no, that I think that mutual relationship that evolved was so powerful. So I love that you pointed that out. And um, and I love that you, with the Q&A, just for everyone listening, like it was so powerful it was like it didn't take time you jumped on the opportunity you didn't know the tech you let yourself be messy with the tech you let yourself be supported with questions with the tech like I think so often we're taught like oh you know like oh I should know that, whatever instead of like no like the support out there and that was one of the big another big thing in this program that I wanted everyone to feel was like not only are you supported but we actually want you to use that support like I think sometimes we can join programs and feel like, oh, I should, you know, I should know this myself, and that's how I've been made to feel, so then we don't step up, ask the questions, and it was just such a gift to everyone, and Tracy, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, but one of the big things that I know about you that we've spoken about in the past, it is visibility, so I think it's huge, like, that you went on to create the live in the Facebook group, and to do the live Q&A, and I'm just super proud, and it was amazing, you knocked them both out of the water, so thank you. Oh, and I just want to mention that I did, I did it in the wrong group. <laughs> I did it in the wrong group. After all of that, I did it in the wrong group. And that was okay. I was like, okay, well, you know what? I did it in the wrong group. But it was literally time hacking principles at its finest. It really was. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. It's like the thing that we think is a problem is just another learning opportunity for everyone else. So like you cannot go wrong in any of my spaces. That's one of the things I want everyone to know is that you can never go wrong. We had other people on the live Q and A's, I'm gonna interview them too, but you know, like the calls were late, they actually couldn't get in, the password, like all kinds of things went wrong. And my response whenever anyone was like, oh no, was like, great. Because the one thing I want us to be examples of on this podcast, inside Time Hackers and outside as Time Hacker coaches is that being humans, being human and humans is okay. Like there's nothing we can do that that's wrong. In fact, it's my favorite thing about every person that I know is that they are human and not a robot. <laughs> so thanks for sharing that, Tracy. Bridget. So the thing I loved about doing the Q&A was, A, it was a kind of different format that I hadn't done before. So that thing of speaking, visibly and then reading the chat that was something I hadn't really participated in before and also I really loved like we do we have the time hacker modules that we go through but the Q&A's were really an opportunity to take that lesson and then have your own thinking about it and I really discovered that I have my own thinking about it like we weren't just relaying what Vicky 
had told us. Mm. We were actually having our own thoughts, ideas about it as well. And I found that, I just thought, oh my God, we should do all of these. All of us should do all of these. Like it would really massively increase the ideas that we have about these concepts. Mm. Yes. And that's, I think it's like, and just for everyone listening, if you are already in Time Hackers, you already have access to all the live Q&As. And if you join, you get immediate access to them all as well. Because I think what Bridget's just said is huge, which is there's me, the creator, the teacher, and then there's the interpretation. And that interpretation is not exactly equal to my intention. And that there's actually something more special about that right it's like allowing your brain to fuse with like a concept and create something else and create something else and what we've created here I think in in the library of now time hackers is like 10x the value with the ultimate time hack being like me uh, hiring you guys to do it like it's not about like me you know we don't always have to do everything ourselves we aren't always the best person to do the job and it, just seeing the creativity seeing the support seeing that like it's just been really it was really amazing to see and I think exactly like you said Bridget it's like that fuse of ideas um sparked like more and more creativity which we'll all benefit from yeah and but it's the faster principle exactly yeah, and I really love how you being an example of this totally gives us permission to do things that we think we shouldn't do, like uh, the format for the Q&A was you kind of submit a video, you get feedback. I didn't submit a video. I didn't get the feedback. I did it anyway. Um, and also, Vicky, when you started Time Hackers, tell me if I've got this wrong, but didn't we join? And there was zero in the portal. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like zero. And it was such a relief. Mm -hmm. Like, A, I suddenly, I didn't have a ton of stuff that I should be telling myself I should do. And B, the example that you can create a program and have nothing in it to begin with was just huge, I think. Like, anything goes. Yes, anything goes. And exactly like you said, I think sometimes when people sell a program, they sell the idea that like in order to create results or see change, you have to do all parts of the program. You have to watch all the videos. You have to come and get coached. You have to come to every live call and get coached. You have to now offering one to one coaching. You have to jump on that, too. You have to watch all the live Q&As. And really one of the principles, I mean, Tracy mentioned the faster principle. Um, what but what we're really being ex examples of here is like one thing let one thing change everything let one thing be a domino like if you are the type of person that comes in and wants to binge the program or, or the private podcast or whatever and take it all in then amazing but it's not necessary to either create the program or benefit from the program and I think we can just put a lot of like that pressure down because that's again to Tracy's point what we've been taught academically is in order to pass the exam you must like you know in order to produce the result you must do all the things and that's what we're unlearning inside um both containers and i actually think you not having anything in the portal was like it really showed me that actually what you get when you forward money to someone is an energy Mm -hmm. and that energy was like you, you like anything goes you being you goes mm -hmm. doing you goes it was yeah amazing amazing thank you for sharing that because obviously people that join now come in and we've got the videos the bonuses the live q a's the past coaching calls like there's just you know there's lots of value there and also you don't just to reiterate you don't have to do all the things to receive that value much like what Bridget's saying and I, I love that you shared that because I think even I forget that that's like where we started versus where we are it's so fun yeah Vicky I wanted to add what truly blew me away about the program was the trust that you placed in us to do those Q&A calls you decided for yourself I trust all these people to do this how they're going to do it 
that they're going to show up, all these things, total trust. And I just look back and go, wow, how much did that trust pay off? I mean, that taught me so, so much, really. That's the, I think that's my biggest takeaway is to trust myself, to trust other people, to trust the universe, like really amazing. You really showed us, and you've said this over and over, but you really showed us, you have no idea right now how capable you are, like I think, in people. And it pays off. And I wanted to ask whether that was hard for you to, to just make us. I mean, I know you practice it well. <laughs> um, it wasn't it really like I, I just always think about reciprocity and the relationships that we're building. And I think a huge reason why it's easy for me to trust you all, not only because, you know, you, Actually, people join Time Hackers just to become a Time Hacker coach. So I didn't know everyone. Um, but I really trust myself. I trust that whatever worst case scenario, if a video doesn't get, you know, if someone hasn't ever watched a video and goes on and teaches, you know, how to perfect your to-do list or whatever it might be, and it's not what I'm teaching, we can just go back and do it again. Like, I'm just not going to punish myself or any individual for anything that goes wrong. So therefore, there's so much safety to fail there's so much safety for things to happen that nothing can go wrong right like I just think too often we think trust has to be earned by doing but I think you start with trust right and, and like what, what Tracy was saying about creating safety like creating safety in myself and, and also taking responsibility you know we spoke about responsibility of um, time versus self what this is one of the after effects I think of taking responsibility instead of giving time responsibility you are able to achieve so much more you are able to expand so much more you are able to open yourselves up to so much more so um I think that's all played in it I'm just gonna let show it again um I think we'll have to mute her here just so everyone knows tech happens and I think Joe's computer just wiped out and was like I'm not working anymore and so she's just joined now via um her phone which is also totally fine amazing and what else was I going to say one of the big things one of my intentions behind this was actually to teach not through telling but through questioning so really allow like all of us to create like I knew I knew the messages that I wanted to get across but I really wanted to teach by allowing your brains to create the answers instead of be told so I just wanted to see, that was like something that I thought was quite different in terms of how I've was taught how to be a coach or how I was taught how to do anything so I wanted if you guys are open to share a little bit about what that experience was like for you to be taught in a way where you weren't told yeah Bridget uh, yeah, I was wondering when you were going to tell us the things. Mm. Yeah. Like that did take a little bit of adjustment, I think. Like when is she actually going to deliver the information that we need to know? Mm. And um, and I suppose actually what happened is that we all created the information. Mm. yeah and I think so much more value than just my one brain like there was times when you know we were all really learning from each other yeah and I think that has the effect of you know when you're sitting there waiting to learn you're in student energy aren't you waiting for the teacher to bestow their information on you when you're sat there and the onus is to contribute because if you don't the whole is slightly less then the onus is to like come forward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes and I mean you guys know about this but one of my strong principles in my business and my communities is really to be non- hierarchical and I just think it's an accidental way where we push people down you know I'm a, that student teacher mentality it's like definitely not what I wanted to bring so even though 
there were definite things that I was like, I wanted to make sure that they were weaved in. To be honest, like, you'll be amazed. And this is for everyone listening, how much your brain already knows. And often it's just about feeling safe to express it, knowing what to ask it. I think asking the right questions is like the number one most important thing. In fact, when I used to study for exams at school, I would study by asking questions not by learning chapters, like even history and physics and maths, all of it. I always study through questions. So I think the questions are the important part. So, yeah. yeah, and I did think it, it took a bit of readjustment. Yes, yes, because we're taught. You see it in, in some of the others, like... Yeah. Was... We, I don't think I've ever really experienced, like, continued learning on that basis. Mm. And I think actually, to begin with, I did find it like, oh, but this is the thing in time hacking, isn't it? When you stop giving time responsibility, you have to take responsibility. And to begin with, there can often be a bit of a plunge in like self-esteem or you can go into like shaming and blaming yourself. I think it was a bit the same, like, what am I not getting here that I should be getting? What am I not doing here that I should be doing kind mm -hmm. of thing? Mm -hmm. And then you grow, I was going to say eventually, but that is a time reference, but you start to take responsibility for yourself and your own learning. Yes. And the co-learning, the co -learning, that's what it is. It's co-learning, it's co-creating. And that's so much more powerful. Yes. Thanks, Bridget. Tracy or Joe? Yeah, I had, um, I struggled. Uh, I fought with myself a lot through the program because they're, again, just going back to that whole academia thing and, you know, being, you know, 67 root revolutions around the sun. I've been in a lot of learning situations where you're told what to do and this is what the outcome is. And, and, you know, here it is. So I really struggled with, wait a minute, like, where's the structure? Where's what, what happens next? What, like, what's going on here? And then I, and then I'd be like, oh, wait a minute, how, how do I use this? How can I, how can I evolve with this as it is right now and just get just come and get whatever it is that I need in the moment that I need it. And I would vacillate between these two ideas until I finally just let it be what it was and just said, okay, I'm just going to get everything I can get out of this. And that's how I'm going to be in the program. So good. It's literally like the vacillation that you're speaking about, I think shows up in so many evolutions and so much change that we create in the world and the willingness to like have that uncomfortable period. I think so often when we think about coaching or investing in a program, we're thinking about like what we want on the other side, which is exactly what to be thinking about. But then sometimes when you do step in and you experience that, you know, like I mean, both of you spoke about it, that discomfort around like the initial like unlearning that is part of the growth, but it can just feel like uncomfortable and knowing for anyone listening, whether you're going to become a time hacker, become a time hacker coach, or you just listen for your own time benefits, just knowing that that initial discomfort of any change is not wrong. It's often mm. actually the first point of right. So thank you, Tracy. Joe, is there anything you want to share? Yeah, what I found to be a very pleasant surprise was that I did not have any problem, or I shouldn't say problem, but I did not feel unsafe with the way the program went. I was kind of surprised, you know, seeing others, the issues with safety and needing to know. I was like, this is interesting because maybe, perhaps, I would not have joined if it had all been laid out at the beginning. It'd be like, mm. you'll be expected to group coach and you'll be expected to teach and you'll be expected to do this and this. Maybe I would have been scared off initially. I don't know. I mean, I would have coached myself on it, got coaching. But still, I never had this sense of, I need to know, I need to know. I love that it just played out as it did. And what I love the most is that you had me do a particular exercise in the group and said, how have you, Joe, created your experience for yourself in this program? And I love that exercise because it obviously all my thoughts were like, oh, the people are so supportive. And Vicky's such a good teacher. And 
all these sorts of thoughts is like, no, I've created this very successful, very enjoyable experience for myself. And I loved listing out all those ways. And it, and of course, it's the way I chose to show up to it, which I learned in your holiday hustle pop up. You coached me then and you said, you've created this experience for yourself here by showing up every day or however often I showed up. And I love seeing that. It just shows us again and again, the power that we have to create our own experiences. Yes. And it's so important to say that because when I bring people onto the podcast and I've invited everyone inside this program onto the podcast, um, just to give the full experience. Um, but when, when we do it and then, you know, we get testimonials and whatever, and people are like, oh my God, this coach or this program. And it's like just another sneaky way that we give other people credit. And even if it's co-creation, I just think, especially as, you know, women, like all, in all the ways that I can remind everyone that they're amazing, um, I think it's just super important to do so, that we, all, you know, to take the credit. Like it's not about me at all. It's always about you. And I do, I do love what we co-created in this community. I do think it's wildly powerful, um, special, magical, uh, brilliant, creative, like really so many things beyond even what I imagine. So I do want to thank you all for being part of it, for saying yes. I think at the time, maybe there was one email or two emails that went out. There was no sales page. It was just an application and you all just like lent in and trusted and chose um, to do it. And I think for the future, our intentions with this program are for it to become, you know, more professional, let's say, if that's the right word, but more, you know, with a sales page and, you know, all of those kind of things. But I do love that you all leapt in now. Um, is there anything that you want to share with people about the experience or anyone, if anyone's thinking, well, I'm not a time hacker, should I become a time hacker coach? Or I am a time hacker, How to be should I become a time hacker coach? Like, is there anything that you each want to share as a close? And then I'll get you all to share how people can stay connected with you. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I want to say, always, always follow the pull that you, if you're feeling a pull to something, then do it. Like how many times have I experienced that? And with this program in particular, obviously I had all sorts of thoughts about, I mean, other programs and is this too much and all these questions. And I'm just so grateful that I listened to my body basically. I think we always, always know. And what you teach us is that trust in ourselves. Like that's what I'm, again, I'm so grateful for that because I love now that I, I used to honestly gather opinions from everyone everywhere all the time. I love now that I just trust what my body says, what my instinct says, and how much time have I saved myself in my life now that I'm not spending months gathering other people's opinions. It doesn't matter anymore. The only opinion that matters to me is my own. And I love that gift. So I'm very grateful to you for that, Vicky. Oh, thank you. That's so powerful as well. Like, because I do think we're taught to outsource and to you know rally around and to get everyone else's opinions. Um, but when we quieten that noise, it actually becomes easier and easier to really hiss it, listen to the most important opinion, which is our own. Thank you. That's beautiful. Yeah, Tracy. Yeah, I was, I mean, that's that really hits home because I think for me, you know, time hacking is so much more than time hacking. It's it's life hacking, really. It's it's not just about how do I optimize the day? It's it's about how do I optimize me. Like, how do I optimize me to become the best possibility that I can give that then creates the domino effect out into the world that we're all here for, right? As coaches, that's that's what we're here to do. And I just think it's been an incredible experience. I can't thank you enough for what you've given to this community and to me. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I love that. It's life hacking. That might be what we call this podcast episode. <laughs> um Bridget is there anything you want to add yeah well should you join time hackers I what I love about time hackers is that I think it's sneaky it like feels like time it's not so you know not so such a big issue but then when you get into it it permeates some of the most fundamental aspects of your life and 
yes, I've got loads more time. I work almost a thousand hours less a year now, thanks to Time Hackers. But not only do I work less, I, um, I feel so much more me in doing that. Time Hackers constantly affirms who you are, what you're doing and how you're doing it. And that just filters out into all aspects of your life, I think. And it doesn't just affirm you, it gives you, Stephen Porges says safety is not just the absence of threat, but the presence of connection. Mm. And the ability to turn up to the group coaching session, a bit of a mess and be witness. It's just, for me, it's the being witnessed in my mess that is the most healing for me. And so, yeah, I, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, and what about becoming a time hacker coach? Oh, well, like no brainer, yeah. It <laughs> just, just the ability to sort of deep, dive into those things and also to spread oh my god it's so lovely to be able to spread those concepts to people who need them like I do I'll be able to do that through my clients through my work like yeah amazing so thank you all for being here um, if you are listening and you want to get coached by one of these amazing coaches, then I'm going to have them share their personal stuff. And also you can obviously come get coached through Time Hackers as well. We're super excited to be rolling out one-to-one -one coaching, both for our Time Hackers and for the public. Um, so that's going to be fun. You just want to stay on top of the email or my Instagram or this podcast to find out more. Anyway, we're going to close off with you guys. So me first thanking you all for your time. I know how precious it is. And your brilliance, which is really even more valuable. And inviting you to let people know um, maybe how they can stay connected with you. And even more, like, who you particularly love to help in your work. Yeah, so I am helping stay-at-home mums. And I am over mainly on Instagram at joyful, with two L's, dot mama. So joyful.mama, M-A-M-A, -M -A, or uh, my website is Joyful Mama Coaching. So thank you again, Vicky, for this conversation. I've loved it. I've loved hearing everyone else's opinions, feedback. It's been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jo. Amazing. Okay, Tracy. Uh, yes, you can find me at Emerson's underscore coaching on Instagram. And um, I basically help new coaches develop the confidence that they need in order to be the best possibility that they can be for their clients. Love it. And Miss Bridget. Yes, you can find me also on Instagram at bridget.mitchell underscore. And that's my coaching feed. And also my box making feed is at Arca Preservation and I coach craftspeople and conservators to feel their way to making more money and uh, a business that they love. So. Amazing and actually I'm going to close with a story of when I first brought Bridget in as a coach because I mentioned it at the beginning and then I didn't continue but essentially I was in a situation where I knew I wasn't going to be able to coach. I didn't want to let the community down, although if it came to it, I would have. And so I DM'd you and you were going to coach without even a phone call from me. You didn't get a phone call. You literally got maybe two DMs. Um, do you remember what I said to you? I don't. I, I put me into a state of shock. <laughs> but I remember what I was thinking and what the one thing that I knew the one thing that I believed was the only thing that you needed to know, which is I said to you, why before you, you know, before your brain melts, I just want to invite you to think about why I've asked you to do this. What am I thinking? 
And why don't you borrow those thoughts? I didn't even go into like, this is what I'm, again, much like what we spoke about here. I didn't tell you everything I was thinking. I gave you the question that was going to open up your brain. Um, Yeah, no, you didn't tell me anything. And actually, I still ask myself that question every time. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Because I had only just certified when you asked me. What, like it's like it's the length of time thing? <laughs> well, it was in my brain. It was in my brain, totally. Um, I hadn't done any group coaching. I felt that I hadn't even done, although I had done hundreds of hours of coaching, I felt like I hadn't done enough hundreds of hours of coaching. Right. And, yeah, sent me into a complete spin. And that fear that we talked about earlier like yes you can do it with fear but the thing that I continually remind myself is what if that what if you want that fear what if that have it it's not that you want to put the fear aside it can be in the seat next to you what if you actually want the fear mm-hmm. how does that you know how does the fear create something extra for you it's just it's not about getting rid of the fear it's about doing it with it Mm -hmm. and I just the level of fear that I had about doing that and it was it was was, I would honestly say it's the most scary thing I've done in my life and I've jumped out of airplanes and all that kind of stuff that was the most scary thing and so that level of fear resulted in a sort of you know a level of a new level of knowledge that I hadn't experienced before I was I won't say it was fantastic because of course my brain gave me a really hard time about my performance but like I just knew that I had made a massive leap Mm. in my knowledge about my capacity yes I just want to, I just want to add something to that because I believe I was on that call that you, (laughs) that you actually did Bridget. And I just want to say the permission that that gave everybody in that room to realize what they're capable of and what they can do was phenomenal. It had a very deep effect on me. Oh, I'm so glad. Yes, I remember that feedback as well from everyone being like, oh my God, wait, all the rules are made up? Yes, it was so powerful and it was so meant to happen and here's to creating many more opportunities for that inside our communities and for ourselves. So I think what if it was so powerful because I was so scared? Like, yeah, 100%. 100%. Thank you all again. Thank you everyone for listening. I could stay here for hours. But I'm going to let you all <laughs> I will see you at the next episode. I will see you guys inside the Time Hackers community. Um, if you do want to find out about becoming a Time Hacker, vickilouise.com forward slash time hyphen or the minus sign hackers. Um, and as I said, you're just going to have to watch this space for the next round of Become a Time Hacker Coach. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. Bye.